Thank you. Um, uh, here on my first slide, we uh, do have a photograph of one of our horticultural inspectors. Unfortunately, he's since retired, but um, this is uh, one of our inspectors out in the field uh, doing inspection. Um, and I think a lot of folks don't know about us and the division of plant industry and that we actually are out looking at plants, um, that we inspect plants that are sold every day. So I want to talk to you a bit about um, what it is our division of plant industry here at the Department of Agriculture and Markets does. Um, we do a whole lot of stuff um, generally related to plant health. Um, so really we're concerned about insects and diseases that are going to be problems for plants in the marketplace, but also that extends to plants in natural areas. And as plants are moved about, we want to make sure that they're healthy and that they're not bringing any uh, problems in along with them. So in order to accomplish that, we register um, plant growers and dealers um, and be as an offshoot of that, we then go, we register them and then we inspect them for all plants that are sold um, so that we are checking for that health. We also have a commodities program where we um, inspect seed that is being uh, sold in the state of New York as well as fertilizer and lime. Um, in terms of seed, we are checking uh, that it is properly labeled. There are uh, requirements for labeling seed um, based on the quantity, larger quantities need to have uh, germination and purity rates on them. And we actually take samples of the seed to see that is it indeed of the quality it says it is. Um, so this is essentially like a, a consumer protection, farmer protection type of function, but making sure that people are actually getting the seed that they think that, that the company claims they are, are buying. Um, we, and we do similar things with fertilizer and lime that is sold. We also have the apiary program for the state of New York as part of the Department of Agriculture and Markets. And so that means we're out inspecting beekeepers and large honey, large honeybee operations to make sure that the bees are healthy. Um, we conduct, um, we do inspection and sampling in general of both plants, but also these other items as well. Uh, we issue phytosanitary certificates. Okay, phytosanitary. Phyto meaning plant, sanitary meaning health. And this is we will go and inspect plants that are uh, being sold to another country, and we have the authority to issue federal phytosanitary certificates for exporting New York State plants. And we also can issue state phytosanitary certificates for plants being shipped to other states where they may require special inspections to make sure that a plant is truly clean of certain pests that they're concerned about. For example, gypsy moth, Japanese beetle, those are pests that we have here in New York State and are unfortunately are very used to, but our western states don't have them and we will have to do uh, often do extra inspections and make a notation that no, this material was inspected and did not have these pests and is therefore able to ship. We're involved in many surveys, the Farm Bill surveys I'll talk a little bit about later, and our Cooperative Agricultural Pest Surveys, which is known as CAPS. We also have a couple eradication programs. There's a couple pests that are been introduced into the state that we're just working to get rid of them. Um, Asian longhorn beetle is one. Uh, we have a very large program working together with our partners at USDA, uh, APHIS, so that's United States Department of Agriculture's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, and we partner with them on pretty much everything. They're our federal partner. But we have a very intense eradication program on Asian longhorn beetle in the New York City, Long Island area, where we are looking to uh, survey areas to see where the Asian longhorn beetle is and to eradicate it from those areas. And we've been being very successful and making great progress there. We also have the Plumpox virus eradication program, which has also been very successful. Plumpox virus being a disease, disease of peaches, plums, prunes, and the like. 
um, management programs. We have a couple of management programs, in particular our golden nematode program. Golden nematode is a pest of uh, potatoes. It's a invasive that came over from Germany uh, after World War I. Um, some other day I can give you the long history lesson on that. But um, what we've been able to do is while it is present in New York State, this nematode, a roundworm, is found in the soil and the soil is infested with it, we are ma making sure that it does not move to other states. You might have heard of a state named Idaho. They'd be very upset if this potato pest got there. And because we've been able to manage that pest, put up quarantines, we are still able to move our potatoes. Also, another function in the division of plant industry is that we have oversee the New York State Seed Testing Laboratory. It was previously located at the Geneva Experiment Station, part of Cornell, but now it's directly part of our Department of Agriculture and Markets, and it's based here in the Albany area, and uh, the laboratory is uh, under the direction of Kyle Arvin, and uh, we that is also falls under the division of plant industry so basically we do a whole bunch of stuff related to plant health getting into more specifically into the surveys our cap survey cooperative agricultural pest survey is an exotic pest survey we're looking for things that are not here now and uh, we're very fortunate in that each state uh, does receive money from USDA APHIS to conduct these exotic pest surveys. Essentially because if you can find something early, it's much easier to um, manage it, to eradicate it, get rid of the problem. So these pests are all about early detection. Um, we get support from uh, our federal partners at USDA about what pests they see as potential really bad guys that we need to be on the outlook for and likely to be in introduced. They give us information on, you know, what the crop damage could be and how bad these pests are if introduced. They also assist us with the technical side of, okay, what trapping method should you use and pro provide us with the traps and tools uh, and lures available when they are available. Sometimes there is no trap because nobody's done any research. Nobody's come up with a proper lure for a pest um, or it's a disease. So you just you know, need to know what to look for and look for those visual signs and symptoms. And so U USDA is an excellent partner in helping guiding us in this work. We, in New here in New York State, we look for about 10 targets per year. Um, that work is done by our horticultural inspectors in conjunction with other work that they do. Other surveys that we're involved in is the Farm Bill surveys. And so we're looking for, uh, uh, in Farm Bill, these Farm Bill, these surveys are generally looking for pests in a commodity area. So we're looking for pests of grapes, exotic pests of grapes that are not here yet and we go out to a vineyard and look for a range of pests um, in the vineyard. These include insects as well as diseases. Other, in addition to grapes, we ha are fortunate to have, be doing a survey in orchards, small fruits, as in strawberries, raspberries, blueberries. Stone, we have a stone fruit commodity survey, stone fruit being peaches, anything with, with a pit is a stone fruit. We also have a honeybee health survey that we're part of. Um, in addition to surveys from our farm bill, federal farm bill funding, we're able to do outreach projects related to awareness and we've had a number of those projects. Really helps to get the word out. This type of work is not stuff that we can do by ourselves. Uh, we don't have that type of staff and we're very fortunate in our ability to collaborate with others. Uh, on our survey work, we conduct these surveys by collaborating with the New York State Integrated Pest Management Program, which is part of Cornell University. And we also work with Cornell Cooperative Extension. Many of the regional programs and county programs um, have been able to help us conduct surveys across the state in the commodities, working with the growers that they're already working with and really helping us get very good coverage. 
another very important and critical partner in all this work is having someone can provide proper identification. My inspectors know a heck of a lot about plants and insects and diseases, but you really, when you're talking about telling someone, okay, you have a pest and you're now going to have to destroy this crop, you better be doubly sure. And we absolutely rely on a, the insect diagnostic lab uh, in the entomology department at Cornell University in Ithaca, as well as the disease diagnostic lab, both uh, at Cornell University, both the one uh, based in Ithaca, as well as uh, the facility on Long Island um, in Riverhead at the, that Marjorie Daughtry um, cut oversees. Um, we take our different surveys and look at the whole breadth of them to look at different pests. So we're not, okay, so let's say something's a pest of small fruits and then it might also be a pest of orchards. We spread them out. So we're not just doing them double up. So we try to get as much bang for the buck, get as many pests and as much area of the state covered. Uh, because of all the ports of introduction, so many, the large number of international ports, in the New York City, Long Island area, and certainly Buffalo and Champlain, we've got a lot of places that we need to be watching out for. Um, do want to mention that there is a, annually for these Farm Bill projects, there's a suggestion process that is very open. And so if there is something related to a, a survey uh, that would fit in with a Farm Bill surveys, we're certainly open to working with others and, and looking at suggestions. Why, why is this stuff important? You know, why do we want to find something? Well, first and foremost, I, you know, frankly, it's about money <laughs> and we need to looking to maintain market access. So if a pest is identified to be in the state of New York, then our crops, our plant products um, cannot be sold outside the state. So unless we are monitoring, surveying, and checking, and making sure that something isn't actively spreading, um, uh, it's important for us to do that work so that our crops and products can get to market and can be sold, um, uh, not just in other countries, but also in other states, absolutely. Early detection, so, so important. You know, it's so much easier to kill or control one acre of a problem as opposed to 10, 20, 100 acres of, of a problem or one plant with a problem versus a whole greenhouse of a problem. So um, can never emphasize how key early detection is. And then we can't do it all. So absolutely outreach makes it possible for us to tap into what I call the eyes of the many, you know, I'm not so, it's important that we recognize that this is not a job that one person, one agency, one group, one individual can do. We all do a part. We all are looking at different pieces. Um, so yes, my horticultural inspectors are out there looking, listening, hearing, the, hearing what the growers say and then following up on, oh, hmm, well, you know, I saw this interesting thing. Very important, but we really, really, count on the horticulture industry bringing things to our attention, the prisms bringing things to our attentions, cooperative extension, absolutely, the public in general, gardeners, you know, nothing like someone fussing over their individual perennial garden to bring something to light. Um, and f frankly, it's very often someone from the general public who identifies a pest initially. So what's, what's the range, scope of the surveys? Uh, just this past year, the su surveys that were done covered 55 different insects and diseases. And then there were another additional 25 pests of honeybees. So basically a, everything from A to Z, apple, apple proliferation phytoplasma. And for those of you who know me know, oh, I just love the, the alliteration of that word, but a very serious disease of apples that they have in Europe that we definitely don't want to get. And then we have 
And then also for the A to Z to certainly the walnut twig beetle, another pest, you know, we have done survey work for. Most of what we, f we are surveying for, we don't find. That's good news. We're trying to find it before it gets here. Um, mentioned that my growers, uh, my, excuse me, my inspectors conduct, in, uh, horticultural inspectors conduct inspections of all growers and retailers of plants. There's in addition to what we are doing in the establishments around the state, there's also risk-based inspections that are conducted at the ports when, the, when any plants that are being brought in are first, first done. Any plants that are being imported into the United States go through certain ports of entry so that they have the technical expertise and the specialists based at the port to who's familiar with those types of plant products based there. So when a, a grower looks to import plants from another country, which is not a simple process by any means, they get an import permit. And as part of that importation, the those plants will, their first point of arrival in the United States will be very directed based on where there is a plant inspection station that can do the inspection at the port before the material moves in. There are many species that to bring them into the United States, they go through what we say a, call a post-entry quarantine. So the plants can come in, but then they need to be planted in an air isolated area where they get checked and monitored so that they might look fine when they come in, but we want to watch them for a couple of years before we let them go and mix with the other plants of the same kind. So if they had a pest, it wouldn't have moved onto these other host material. So that's called a post entry quarantine where you bring a crop in, but uh, bring some plants in, but they have to be kept separate from other plants and watch for a period of time. And we come in and do periodic inspections to make sure that there are no problems of concern popping up during that period. It's not everything that can be brought in that way. And frankly, not every plant can be brought, can be imported from overseas into the United States. Some, some plants are allowed from some countries and not at all allowed from other countries. And that's basically that because of the pests that they have in those countries and the level of risk that it would pose for our crops. Not an easy process to bring plant material in from other countries. Uh, you need uh, permits and there's an application process. Um, not something that anyone can just go, oh, I'm gonna go bring in a whole bunch of trees, uh, a whole bunch of trees from Europe. Um, and one example, you cannot import grapevines from anywhere into the United States other than Canada. So uh, because of the concerns about possible pests coming in. Um, I think there might be some ways that we could do this safely, but at this point, grapevines or vitus is considered a prohibited plant. There are many plants are listed as prohibited plants. Um, we are also be shipment inspections. That may be when a, a grower receives a shipment at an operation in the state. If my inspectors are able to be there, they will be there and take a look at the material and, and check it uh, when it comes in. And really, frankly, a lot of uh, operations do shipment inspections on their own material because you want to make sure when you get the plants in that they are clean. And before you mix them with all your other crops uh, and same hosts, you wanna make sure that they're not any insect or disease problems present. So we're always looking out for the next big thing and how, how do we know what to be looking out for? Well, a big part of that is we watch what's going on in other countries, we being the big we, as in, uh, not just the state, but we have this help from the United States, USDA's uh, APHIS, uh, Animal Plant Health Inspection Service, and, and their PPQ, Plant Protection and Quarantine Unit. They, you know, really help us see the big picture and what's on the horizon. And we work with 
what's called NAPO, the North American Plant Protection Organization, where United States, Canada, and Mexico work together and look at the pest problems that we're concerned about and come up with standards uh, for plant health within, the, within North America. This is also falls under the IPPC, the International Plant Protection Confederation, which is, I'm going to jump ahead here, which is part of the, actually part of the World Trade Organization. And there is a treaty signed that countries have signed on to. So each country has uh, their own, uh, uh, or countries are involved in these regional uh groups such as we have the NAPO, the North American region. And then in Europe, there's the European Union uh, Plant Protection Organization. And there's regional groups that come together under IPPC and agree, okay, we're going to make sure that plant material moving from one state to, to another is clean and uh, not posing a problem. And these international standards for phytosanitary measures we're all agreeing that, hey, you know, nobody does well when, with dirty material. And these are critical, media and abiding by these are critical for trade from one country to another. I want to go back for a quick minute. So this is the type of information that just gets, that is shared and we are under obligation and we meet it together with Canada and Mexico on, okay, pest problems found. Um, this was from uh, I took right off the web in September, and this is a list of the most recent pests at the time, and you'll see uh, various uh, fruit flies on there be being found in new counties and stuff. So there's a very open conversation about sharing uh, pests of concern, when is a pest uh, uh, found, and also when it is eradicated. This is pretty exciting down here on May 19th, where we can say that there's uh, portions of Queens uh, in down in New York City that are no longer <coughs> under quarantine area for Asian longhorn beetle because of the good survey work that's shown that it's no longer there. Plant imports, every plant import coming in must have a phytosanitary certificate of inspection from the country of origin. So prior to being shipped, somebody's taken a look at the shipment to see okay, is there something, you know, is there a problem there? Are these plants healthy? Um, I want to mention that, okay, it's not just the State Department of Agriculture on their own coming up with this work. You know, USDA is such a tremendous partner on all this. And when a new pest comes along, they put together new pest response guidelines. Tomato leaf miner, if it were to get into the United States and get established, is a pest we would very much be concerned about. A couple things we're wor look, worrying about and looking for looking now or on our, our watch list is uh, spotted lanternfly and capra beetle. And then I'll touch a little bit quickly on the European cherry fruit fly. I think most of the prisms are aware and are concerned about the spotted lanternfly. It was uh, found in Pennsylvania in 2014, and we just found did find an individual spotted lantern, lantern fly uh, just this month, as did Delaware. Uh, definitely concerned about it, going to be working on it, uh, looking on how to uh, address, be on the lookout for this pest so we can locate it and eradicate it quickly. Um, could be significant damage to grapes, hops, apples, uh, as well as our natural areas. Preferred host happens to be tree of heaven. Uh, capra beetle is another pest that together with USDA, we're always looking for and it gets found repeatedly, but does manage to get eradicated. It gets into stored products, can be very serious. That's another pest that continually, United States continually looks for and manages to um, eradicate and not let it get established. European cherry fruit fly, unfortunately, uh, is one that we're going to be spending some time on. It's the most serious pest of cherries in Europe, 
and it was found in over in uh, uh, the province of Ontario in 2015, and that spurred surveys in New York and Pennsylvania the following year. Unfortunately, we have just found it in Niagara County uh, this past year. USDA APHIS actually was part of their portion of the survey we were doing together, and we're working with cherry growers on how we're going to address this pest. But it's really about um, early detection, eyes and ears out there, um, knowing what the next big thing can be, and really looking to work with other countries and other partners to have standards for um, phytosanitary standards so that um, plant material that's moving is clean and pest free. With that, I I'll turn it back over and uh, be available to answer some questions with the, whatever time's available.